great. We're going to need a little energy to get through a whole day of this stuff, believe me. Uh, welcome to uh, Petrochemical Industry Fundamentals, or what I like to say, everything you wanted to know about the chemical industry but were afraid to ask. The term petrochemical actually started up back in the 20s and 30s as we were developing our refining industry to make more and more gasoline for the automobile industry. And the demand is driven by plastics, probably the biggest piece of the business, but also by synthetic rubber, which we call elastomers, and also the fibers business. So what do I mean by the seven basic building blocks? Well, each pillar is a building block. So if we start with one carbon, we call that building block synthesis gas, or shorthand, we call it syngas, which is carbon monoxide and hydrogen. We're not going to really spend time on that today, OK? But that's, that would get us into the methanol and ammonia business. Then we have the so-called olefins. Okay? Ethylene is the biggest of the building blocks, two carbons. Propylene, three carbons. And then we have actually four C4 olefins, with butadiene perhaps being the most valuable. And then the other side of the structure are the so-called aromatics. Right? Benzene, six carbons. Toluene, seven carbons. Xylenes, eight carbons. What are the raw materials for petrochemical production? How are petrochemical feedstocks produced? And most importantly, how do we value them? This is not an academic course. This is a course about the business of petrochemicals. So I think about feedstocks as essentially the paint for the petrochemical industry. And if you think about it, all of these feedstocks are already currently used by the petrochemical industry, every single one of these feedstocks. However, some are used a lot more than others. Okay, and that's where we're going to focus.